well, I get to heal. I get to feel good. I get to explore and reclaim my sexuality. And something that I really want to emphasize for anyone listening is your sexuality, your desires, your orgasm, your wildness, your ugliness, your emotions, everything you could ever experience is divine and is a gift. Welcome to Love Magic Miracles. I'm Elena GG. And if you're a soul led entrepreneur who wants to make a big impact in the world, you're in the right place. And if you'd love to weave feminine embodiment into your everyday and quantum leap every area of your business and love life to new heights, then plug into these conversations with these inspiring thought leaders and hit subscribe, comment, like, and share with someone you care about today. I currently call myself an integrative sex and embodiment coach and somatic intimacy educator. And you're also the host of the Sensuous podcast. What led you to this work in the first place? When I was really little, like from an early age, I was very sexually curious. Um, And from a young age, I noticed, wow, if I rub my pelvis on my childhood bedroom carpet in this direction, it feels really good. What is this feeling? What is this pleasure? And I just had this natural, innocent curiosity about pleasure and about my own body and exploration. And at the same time, as I was exploring my body from a young age, I was also feeling so much shame and anxiety and guilt and fear because Um, I was living in an environment in the U S where sex is something that is bad and shameful and dirty and wrong and sinful. And we don't talk about that. And it was very much not a conversation. And so I didn't know it at the time, but every time you are touching yourself, like the feelings and emotions that you're experiencing as you are exploring your body, it's kind of being over coupled together. So I was unconsciously associating my sexuality, my pleasure, my orgasm over time with the feeling of anxiety and guilt, shame, shutdown, and this feeling of, oh my God, I have to like get to orgasm or get to pleasure as fast as possible. So I don't get caught. And a lot of people don't realize that unconsciously those feelings can um, follow us well into adulthood, into our intimacy relationships, and even our self-pleasure. So I continued to grow up. And when I was in college, um, I had my first like big girl relationship partnership. And it was this, it definitely wasn't perfect, but we co-created a relationship, a container where there was so much safety to freely explore. And so it was this huge sexual awakening. And there were also a lot of substances involved. And we just like spent a lot of time over the years at university, just exploring our sexuality and our desires and our eroticism. And it just cracked me open to what's possible. And we had all of these just like cosmic, ecstatic, blissful experiences. And I was like, holy shit, this is what sex gets to be. And it was so beautiful and so healing to explore that in a safe container with another person. And so in university, I started studying women's and gender studies. And I envisioned a career ahead of me in international development. I thought I would go into nonprofit work specifically around women's empowerment, women's rights, reproductive rights, gender equity issues. Like that was kind of what I envisioned, national development work. I knew that I wanted to leave the U.S. I wanted to leave my little suburban New Jersey bubble and see the world and have experiences and just blast myself open to what's possible. So I only applied to jobs outside of the country. And the first job that got back to me was in Costa Rica. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to Costa Rica. Just get me out of this bubble. (laughs) So I moved to Costa Rica for this job. And it was in Costa Rica where synchronistically I found myself at this festival and I went to this workshop that was all about Tantra and sacred sexuality. And that was one of my very first introductions to even those words. And I remember being at this workshop and I was like, holy shit, like this is what I experienced with my university boyfriend. I knew like there were other dimensions to this and it just cracked open my perspective to like, wow, these are lineages and traditions that these paths have been walked for thousands of years. And in fact, your sexuality, your body, your orgasm, your pleasure, your desire, 
are pathways to God, to enlightenment, to awakening, to liberation. So after leaving that festival, I ended up studying for a bit with um, the teacher of that workshop that I went to. I took her course. And yeah, after that, like I just in my own personal free time continued studying and practicing. And I was just obsessed. Like I was listening to all the podcasts and books about sacred sexuality and just sex in general. And I remember telling my friends like, oh, I want to be a sex educator. I want to be a sex educator. And they were like, you already are, because I was the friend in the group that people would come to about questions and things that they didn't feel safe talking about with anyone else around sex and self-pleasure and intimacy relationships. I was kind of that go-to friend. And I joined the Peace Corps, which is a U.S. governmental organization where they place you usually in a rural village in another country for about two and a half years, teaching English and sex education. And so looking back, like I was just following all of these breadcrumbs and it was leading me to where I am now. And I got to teach sex education um, in rural high schools in the Dominican Republic. But I got kicked out of that role for um, riding on the back of a motorcycle and I got found out. And since it's a governmental organization, they're very strict with rules and it's like one strike and you're out. And so this was one of those rules and I got kicked out and that triggered like so much shame and guilt and I just felt like so humiliated because I wanted this position as a Peace Corps volunteer for years and years and finally got it. And then I lost it and it awakened like all of these inner child wounds that I had around being seen as bad or being seen as the rule breaker, the bad girl. And so that ignited a huge dark night of the soul depression, just going into like the darkest depths within myself. And it's like one day I was walking around in sunny Dominican Republic. And the next day I was like crying hysterically in my childhood bedroom with my parents in gray, freezing suburban New Jersey. Um, but anyways, that sparked an ego death. And I didn't realize that I was so attached to that identity as being like, a good citizen, the good girl who is a Peace Corps volunteer doing what you should be doing. And it broke me down and ripped me open. And I was like, okay, I just lost my community as I know it. I lost my career path. I lost my new relationship and it stripped me there. And I believe that life gives us those moments so that we remember our true path and what we're meant to do and our purpose and who we really are. And so it allowed me to sit with, okay, who am I and what do I really want when I'm not attached to these false identities and to this external validation? Because in the US, like saying that you're a Peace Corps volunteer is like, oh my God, wow, like you're such a good person. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing that amazing journey. And yeah. I love that you talk about ego death. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when we get triggered and we get, you know, the rug pulled from under us and like you said, so many fantastic parts of your life got stripped away and it is feels painful and it feels like dying and it feels like this dismantling and like everything is lost. But then everything isn't lost, right? Because this is leading to this greater expansion, greater joy, greater love, greater bliss and pleasure. And and when we know that we can we can ride the wave a bit more like if, if you were to experience not something like that again, but, you know, anything where you're really triggered or you get blindsided, how would you bring yourself back to center these days? What would you do? Mm. To be totally honest and transparent, I currently feel like I'm navigating a second dark night of the soul, like this current and Pat, I'm, I feel like I'm clawing my way out of it, but it's been a really fucking challenging chapter. A lot of what I teach mm -hmm. and what I do my best to embody in my own life is being with exactly what's here. And that is a huge tantric practice, principle, and philosophy of recognizing that absolutely everything in existence is divinity, the darkness, the cringe, the devastation, the grief, the loss, the despair, the trauma, and the bliss, the ecstasy, the orgasm, the high points in life. 
absolutely all of it is a fractal of divinity is a microcosm of the macrocosm. So anything that you could ever want to get or experience or learn about the universe, you can learn within the framework of your own body. So even as I am like crying on the floor in fetal position, can I allow myself to not get sucked into that and think I am this emotion? I am this experience, but rather zoom way the fuck out and remember that I am the eternal untouchable witness. I am the consciousness witnessing all of it. I'm the consciousness that is aware of it. So a huge practice that is going to be a lifelong practice for me and that I teach to other people is recentering yourself and anchoring yourself moment to moment to moment to moment in that eternal unwavering consciousness and approaching every moment, every emotion, every up and down inevitably that comes with life, approaching it with radical curiosity, like, wow, okay, the flow of life, the intelligence of life is um, presenting me with this thing and I get to choose how am I in relationship to it. So for me, one of the many keys is to not identify with that which we're feeling or experiencing or thinking, right? Like so many of us live so much in the mental space and we get lost in that and we think that we are our thoughts. We believe our thoughts instead of zooming out, recentering, coming back to that eternal witness, that loving consciousness that is within you at all times, no matter what, even if you lose sight of it, even if you forget, which we will, and we need to be reminded. And yeah, it's coming back to recentering yourself in that. Mm, beautiful. Which again is a lifelong practice, baby. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I feel like yeah. I've just been going through a bit of a shift as well. And um, there's been talk of the equinox that's just been happening and that's bringing up a lot of um, stuff to declutter and clear, you know, emotions, thoughts, um, you know, old patterns and some relationships falling away because it's like you need to make room for the new and for our highest good to come in. We can't, you know, grasp onto everything and then expect something new to come in. We have to kind of let go and it's like our ego feels safe to hang on to things. So the unknown is scary. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just how it works. That's just how we're built, right? Yeah. So well said. That's so, oh, I love this topic around like control and leaning into the unknown, leaning into the mystery. And it's fucking terrifying, especially when we've been taught our whole lives that our sense of self and identity and security and safety is based on how much we're controlling and gripping and having everything planned out and making sure that we're ready and we have all the answers and this is who I am and I fit in this neat little square box but life doesn't work like that the goddess doesn't work like that she has infinite different faces and facets and yeah like that has been such a massive gift that keeps on giving from studying tantra and practicing tantra is recognizing truly the divinity in anything and like i guide a, a lot of my clients through like everything that we typically run from can we have the courage to lean into it so like that pain, that grief, that fear, that shame, instead of thinking that it's something that's horrible and we have to suppress it and deny it and run away from it, can we have the courage to lean into it with curiosity and to even have the audacity to say, you are welcome here. I see you. You are divine. And every single time without fail, whether I'm doing it myself in my personal practice or guiding someone else, like once you allow that part of yourself that we've suppressed for so long to be seen and known and expressed and for that part to actually have a voice every single time it liberates energy because all that energy that we were using to suppress it down is now freed up and liberated. And every single time it reveals so much wisdom, so many gifts, so much power. And yeah, it's incredible every single time. It amazes me that this part of ourselves that maybe someone has been suppressing for decades, like when we reclaim that as an ally, like it, it changes everything and we're no longer at war with ourselves. Wow. 
is it possible to give me an example of of an energy or a wound that we would want to push away Mm. that that we could lean into that we could reclaim can you give me a tangible example please yes absolutely let me lean into the example that wants to be shared (sighs) yeah so a client comes to mind many actually so this is a common experience for a lot of women including myself for a very long time is feeling like we, we are disempowered in our sexuality and our intimate relationships in the sense of, we don't feel like we have choice to me. An oversimplified definition of power and being in your power is feeling connected to choice. When we feel like we don't have choice, we feel disempowered and hopeless and, um, codependent in a lot of ways. So I've worked with a lot of women who have experienced a lot of romantic relationships or even just, um, casual sexual dynamics where they offered their body to another person, even though they knew their body was a no, and they didn't really want it. And this again, has been a huge part of my own journey of feeling like my body only exists to impress another person and please another person. And it's a performance. It's a transaction. That's how I related to my sensuality and sexuality for so long. And so if I was intimate with someone and I only wanted to kiss them, but they were going farther and further, I didn't feel empowered enough to speak up and say no, because my sense of um, identity was so attached to, I need to please you. I need you to like me in order for me to be safe and valuable and worthy and lovable and all of the things. So now as adults, we become aware of these patterns and these parts of ourselves. And for example, if I guide a client to reconnect with that part of them who so badly just wants people to like them and wants to secure that sense of validation and connection and attachment, even if it means sacrificing their authenticity and being true to themselves and honoring their truth. Like every single time that part of them that wants the people pleasing and to secure the connection, it literally just wants to protect you. All of these parts that we think are bad and we want to get rid of nine times out of 10, if not usually 10 times out of 10, it's a part of you that's trying to keep you alive. It's this ancient primal part of yourself that thinks that you acting in this way and perpetuating this habit or this cycle in your life, it thinks that that equates to your own survival. So if we have been shaming ourselves for so long and not being able to forgive ourselves for having a habit of saying yes, when we really mean no, or overextending ourselves and not honoring our truth and our boundaries and our authenticity, like when we can have the lived experience of meeting that tender, innocent part of ourselves and allowing it to have a voice and allowing it to know that I'm no longer a child. You no longer have to spend so much energy trying to protect me. It's okay to be disliked. It's okay to disappoint people. And it's Like so much of this work, I like to almost describe it like time traveling because these parts, if you're familiar with IFS and parts work, like internal family systems, like we are composed of all of these different parts within us and they want to keep us safe. They want us to survive. And, um, it's coming from this pure, innocent place and, those parts of you are almost like stuck in time. They're frozen in time and they're still relating to you as if you are a child who needs this extra protection. So again, a lot of it is like time traveling and it's bringing yourself back to the present moment and it's showing your primal mammalian body. I am now in this present moment. Look around. I'm safe. I'm secure. I don't have to work so hard to protect myself and have all of these mechanisms. So it's by having that exploration and meeting these tender parts of ourselves that so badly want to protect us, that allows us to have greater compassion for ourselves. 
And now that we're aware that these parts exist within us and we know their intentions, we know that they're trying to protect us. It's so much easier to recognize those parts and to recognize when they're in the driver's seat of our lives and our relationships so that we're breaking those cycles and we're not unconsciously repeating these intergenerational patterns. Mm, wow. Yeah. Well said. Well said. That that makes so much sense. And there's so much to unpack there. Let's say we're in a place now where we feel safe and we have an opportunity to connect with, within a sacred union and we want to build that, those beautiful tantric experiences and that eros. What mm. is something we can do with a partner to explore that deeper? My boyfriend wanted me to ask that question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Such a juicy question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so uh, mm, I would suggest that people first build that relationship with yourself, the intimacy, connection, presence, tenderness, like relationship that we have with ourselves makes it so much easier for that to be the foundation that we show up to our external relationships. So whether you are currently single or you have a partner or you have a lover, whatever your relationship status is, I would highly encourage everyone to have a solo practice of some kind, whether you call it a pleasure practice, a self-love practice, just like um, creating a ritualistic time and space to be with yourself and to be with what's real and raw and alive, and to also explore your body, your pleasure, your desires, and your sexual energy. And that way we're showing up to sex and relating with another person from this place of like overflow and deeper security, instead of thinking that your sexuality only exists with another person. That's another huge thing, especially with women. I mean, with all genders, like we think that our sexuality only exists as a performance for another person, or if we're in a relationship, otherwise I don't have a sexuality. I don't have a sex life. And that's so far from the truth. There's so much that we can explore on our own. So, so practically what this could look like is I'm a huge advocate for setting the space. Like make the setting a sacred temple. What would it look like for your physical surroundings to be an altar to your pleasure, an altar to your sexuality, your body, your self-love? And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like, especially if you're currently in a situation where maybe you don't have a private space, this could literally just look like lighting a candle or maybe just tidying up and putting some things away, folding the laundry, putting down a nice blanket, um, playing some beautiful sensual music, like allow the physical environment to be an evocation of that, which you're wanting to experience within yourself. This makes a huge difference. Um, especially for people who, um, if anyone's familiar with the erotic blueprints, um, if you resonate with being highly sensual, then this will really help you to drop into your body when your external surroundings are inviting you into that. Um, so set up the space and music is also really helpful for this. Like be conscious of, um, the quality of the music, um, something that is slow and maybe dreamy or sensual, something that again, is an evocation of what you want to experience. And the built in tools that I love to guide people through are breath, sound, movement, touch, and awareness. So your breath dictates so much of your life experience, whether you're connecting to yourself sexually or just walking around the world, like your breath is your entry into everything that you want to experience your breath. It has the power to be extremely psychedelic and, um, take you to altered states of consciousness. So I would start by closing your eyes, getting still and starting with the breath. So breathing deeply in through the nose, sending that breath down to your lower belly, maybe to your pelvis and exhaling fully and completely and doing that for however long you need to just invite this sense of presence and relaxation, this sense of openness. 
And then incorporating awareness and noticing where is my awareness right now? Is all of my awareness outside of myself or focusing on, oh my God, this is a waste of time. I should be working on my to-do list right now. I got to go send that email. Um, I regret saying that thing to that person the other day. And just being aware of where your thoughts and using your breath and your awareness to like reel that energy back into yourself with every breath, feeling your energy, like filling up your beingness instead of being scattered outside of yourself. And then just start to incorporate intuitively just some touch. Like, where do you want to be touched right now? Even if it's not sexual, like, do you want a nurturing touch, a therapeutic touch? Do you just want to have your hand on your heart and just connect with yourself that way? And you can also invite in, like I said, sound and movement. So something I really love to emphasize is that even if you're doing a quote unquote self-pleasure practice, allow your body to be your guide. So if it doesn't feel true and authentic for you to have a like explicitly sexual experience, do not force that, like allow this space that you've created this container. You could set a timer for even 10, 15 minutes. That's fine. Allow it to be a space where the intention is for your body to know that it can trust you. So many of us like have forced our bodies into things that the body wasn't ready for. So allow it to be a space where you're following the lead of your body. What does your body want right now? And can you honor that and express that? So yeah, starting with the setting that you are creating around yourself in your room, getting still, closing your eyes, connecting with yourself, taking some deep breaths noticing where is my awareness, focus, and attention right now? And can I bring that back into my own beingness, my own center, becoming more aware of the sensations that are here right now? And then allowing your body to take the lead. Like if your body had full freedom, full permission to express in any way you want, how would you touch yourself? How would you sound? How would you breathe? How would you move? Like just be open and curious to where your own body wants to take you. Um, and just one more thing, like, I also want to emphasize the importance of setting a container. Like it can sound daunting for certain people to say, I'm just going to tune into my body and see how I want to feel. I don't know how the fuck, like my body wants to be touched. I don't know. I've never done this before. So set a container by setting a timer for yourself, or maybe setting a playlist that is a certain length of time. And that allows your mind to settle and rest because you know, okay, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then it's done. And I can go about the rest of my day that like having that closed container allows the mind to soften and surrender in my experience. Mm, Beautiful. Mm, Yes. Women really need to feel safe to tap into their feminine. Don't we? Yes. Like number one. That's huge. Yeah. So that comes from, doing these practices and connecting within and and then as we become more aware and more connected to our body and our breath then that builds that sense of trust doesn't it within ourselves so then we can honor our Mm -hmm. yeses and nos and start to speak our boundaries and sometimes when we're speaking a boundary it feels a little bit like it's unsafe or we're vulnerable or we're going to lose someone's love but we just if we keep tuning in and honoring other people's boundaries as well then I feel like that's a big step for humanity right now, right there. Mm, I couldn't agree more. I'm so glad that you brought up safety and trust because that is a massive, massive, massive element for everyone. But I'll speak especially for women because I mostly work with women. And um, just like you said, like your body will not soften, relax, surrender, open, melt into cosmic or cosmic orgasmic bliss if you don't feel safe in your body and um a lot of us might say like I want to create more safety in my body I want to create more relaxation or ease and that's such a beautiful desire and at the same time like 
it can almost feel like this vague abstract concept that always feels just out of reach. So I really love to encourage people to bring it back to the body and the tangible physical world and guiding people to feel like, okay, you want to create safety in your body. Let's tangibly physically discover what does that actually feel like in your body? So as someone's listening, we're tuning in right now. You could do it right now. Like you could close your eyes take some deep breaths. And if you're sitting, just bringing your awareness to the support beneath your body, feeling in your body, like, what is it like to be supported right now? What is it like to be held? Can I soften into that? continuing to breathe and just gently bringing your awareness to wherever you feel a sense of safety in your body right now. And if you have no idea what that feels like, that's absolutely fine. Notice if you can find a part of your body that maybe feels steady, soft, warm, grounded, maybe it feels bubbly or delightful or pleasurable or good. Just bringing your awareness to where in your body do you feel a good sensation where you want to be? And if you don't feel anywhere that feels good or safe or warm, then imagine what to you symbolizes that. Maybe it's a tree, a river, a cloud, a mountain where you're completely alone and no one can access you, like what to you symbolizes safety and just imagine that. So once you're either connected to a part of your body where you feel safety, or you're imagining something that symbolizes safety, taking some moments to breathe directly in and out of that part of your body that is connected to safety. And almost feeling like you're turning up the dial. If there's a radio dial, turning up the dial, the volume on that sensation and even speaking out loud, like what does the physical sensation actually feel like? Does it feel like stillness? Does it feel like a buzziness, champagne bubbles? Is it a heaviness, a lightness, hollow? Just noticing what is the physical sensation of safety or warmth or goodness? What does it feel like in my body? And just for a moment, allowing yourself, yourself being your awareness to rest in that feeling of goodness or safety. What does it feel like to give yourself permission just for a moment to indulge in that safety within your own body, to savor it, to take pleasure in it. And just taking some moments to imprint that feeling, that sensation into your body as a reference point. So this is now an inner resource that you get to come back to. You get to cultivate at any time, whenever you need it. And in your own time, just becoming aware of your body again, maybe bringing some stretching or movement, wiggling your fingers and toes, opening your eyes whenever you're ready. And I love the simplicity of that practice because it, it allows you to have an experiential experience where you're like, wow, okay, this is what safety, at least in this moment, uniquely feels like in my own body. And that way, like if we are in a situation or a moment where we need that extra support or safety, we know what it feels like, and we can bring our awareness to it, breathe into it, be with it for a moment, indulge in it and allow that to support us as we go about our day and our interactions. Mm. Thank you so much. That's that's amazing. That I really felt my hands and my feet, um, and really like I was meditating and just, yeah, like I became a mountain or something. Yeah. Mm. So we are our own powerhouse, and it's all there. And 
yeah, we just need to remember ourselves and plug in, right? It's all within us. Yeah. 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 Mm. And like the more we cultivate that within ourselves, the more bec- the more aware we become of the ways in which we are unconsciously grasping for things outside of ourselves. And we don't realize it usually, but unconsciously we're trying to get something from that thing, that situation, that achievement, that relationship, that identity. And underneath it all, we're trying to access a feeling or a sensation. So it's not that we like, it's not that we want the thing that we think we want. We want how we think it's going to make us feel. Mm -hmm. So noticing like, what is that sensation that I'm grasping for? Can I cultivate that within myself and like exude that thing? And that is an ongoing practice. Mm. Well said. Oh my gosh, I could just listen to you all day. <laughs> this. What a gift it is to even be able to have these experiences and to openly have these conversations. Like, oh my goodness, so many of our ancestors have not been able to um, even contemplate some of these topics. A lot of our ancestors were constantly in situations of survival or desperation or war zones and being in a constant state of fight or flight. So it's such a gift to be able to actually focus on, whoa, I get to heal. I get to feel good. I get to explore and reclaim my sexuality. And something that I really want to emphasize for anyone listening is your sexuality, your desires, your orgasm, your wildness, your ugliness, your emotions, everything you could ever experience is divine and is a gift. And the fact that it exists within you means to me that it belongs in this universe. I know a lot of us, I'll speak for myself, me for a huge portion of my life, something I really struggled with was feeling like I didn't belong and feeling like I was the other or the outcast. And looking back now, reflecting in hindsight, I was unconsciously perpetuating those situations over and over because that was my sense of identity is like, I don't belong. (laughs) You innately belong because you exist to think that there's something wrong with you or bad about you, or you are shameful is to say that God, goddess, divine, the universe made a mistake and fucked up with this one. And I just refuse to believe that as true. Like you exist in this universe which innately means like a place was made for you here you belong in the interwoven fabric of life and reality which means that anything that you could ever experience internally no matter how dark or cringy or shameful or whatever it is that also exists in the universe that also comes from divine creation so my invitation is to Sit with that and feel into it and allow yourself to reclaim all of the parts of yourself that you have been taught are bad or wrong or shameful to reclaim them as a core aspect of who you are, to reclaim them as another face of the divine and to also like create spaces in your life where those parts of yourself can express because the more we suppress it, the more like tension and tightness and contraction we create in our bodies, our minds, our emotions, which are not separate, the more you like create ritualistically spaces to embody and express and feel your emotions. Like the more you liberate that energy within yourself and also physiologically you're creating more openness, relaxation, and ease, which leads to way better sex and orgasms as well. So Yeah, the more we can be with those tender, vulnerable parts of ourselves that we so badly for so long wished were different, the more power and wholeness and reclamation and just radiance you are innately creating in yourself. Mm, Well, that's divine. Uh, So how can people work with you and find you? and, And what is Erotic Revival? Is that your main signature program? 
Yeah. Thank you so much for asking. So currently I have one-on-one private coaching available. And also, as you mentioned, my signature group program, Erotic Revival. I also have lots of um, classes and courses on my website. I have a ton of epic freebies as well. I have a free course, free masterclasses. Now I'm doing single sessions and then longer term deep dive packages where you will not be the same on the other side in all the best ways you will become more and more and more of your core, true, authentic, orgasmic self. And then erotic revival is my program. It's my baby. And it's four months long for this round. It's a hybrid of both. You receive private coaching and then also group coaching. You get access to guided practices and rituals and, um, embodiment journeys and meditations. And it is a deep transformative journey of awakening your true erotic self, awakening your orgasmic pathways and your pleasure pathways, expressing your liberated, sensual wildness and your authenticity and reclaiming your voice. Um, Yeah, a lot of people join who maybe feel like confusion or disconnection around their arousal and their pleasure. They might feel a sense of numbness or just this sense of like gray blah. And they want to feel this revival. They want to feel themselves coming to life and connecting to their sensations in a completely new way. So it's so good. And doors are currently open for enrollment. And I would love to have you inside. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll put all the links up in the show notes. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate everything you've shared today. It's so powerful, empowering, juicy, Mm -hmm. divinely feminine. You're divinely connected and you're serving from a really authentic, beautiful place. And that is so refreshing and you just light up the screen and thank you for being you and doing the work to get you here. Hmm. Alina, thank you so much. And I just want to take a moment to honor you and this beautiful, powerful space that you've created. And the fact that you're having these conversations and putting yourself out there and putting these, um, yeah, these conscious conversations out into the world. Like I know it's going to ripple out and yeah, I just wish you and this platform, nothing but the best. Thank you for having me. Thank you.